Doug here from The Hundredfold Journey. Thanks for joining us here in this live interview that we're doing with Erin Worley. She has written a best-selling book called One Truth, One Law, I Am, I Create. The Hundredfold Journey is about a group of people that are looking to find their true identity and by doing so, finding God's true identity. And we're here to come alongside of you to provide you the tools and resources on your spiritual journey, wherever that may take you. So again, we are here with Aaron, who has wrote this uh, amazing book, and it just happened to come across my desk a couple of weeks ago. I shared it with, uh, with Rich and Rashi, who are part of our leadership team, and we all had the same reaction, which was, this book is amazing. We need to get it in front of our hundredfold people and get it out there as much as possible. Uh, so Aaron, again, thank you for this time to meet with you and your willingness to, uh, to spend this time talking about your book. Thank you guys for having me on. I really am grateful to be here. Um, it is really exciting to be part of something that is so much bigger than me. My book has very little to do with me and very, very much more to do with everyone in the collective. And I'm just very, very grateful um, to be here with you guys. Fantastic. And again, uh, Rich and Rashi, thanks for, for being part of this as well, part of this interview. And Aaron, I'd also like to say that uh, the three of us came to the same uh, understanding that this may be the last book that we need to read. I mean, it had that much of an impact on us that if we were just to apply these truths, that uh, there was really nothing else that we needed uh, because that's how powerful it was. So again, thanks for joining us. And could you just give us kind of a, an overview or the premise of the book and how it came to be? Yeah, so that is a humongous question because I think when most people write a book, they write it and maybe it takes them about a year, you know, maybe it takes them three months, maybe it takes them two years, but they write it, then they publish it, and then it's out there. But my journey was much, much, much different. Um, so many, many years ago, back in 2011, um, I started wanting more in life. Now I had had a very average middle-class upbringing, um, having no idea that there was anything more to life. Now I didn't come from a more religious background. Um, my parents were atheists and so I never questioned that to me. Okay, well, there's no creator, there's nothing and that was fine with me. Um, but I was very unhappy. Um, I had very, very little self-esteem. I didn't believe in myself or my ability to do anything. And so I was going through life like that. I had been bullied very, very badly as a child and I just didn't believe in myself. And I had been in a series of relationships with men who treated me very, very badly because I didn't know that I deserved more. And it's what I, I was putting out there. It was what I was getting back. And, and one day I said, enough. I don't deserve to be treated this way. And I didn't know where this was coming from, but I just decided. And two weeks later, after making this decision, it was one of those like life altering decisions, yep. right? That, that, you know, you can look back and you can see one or two things you did in your life really turn the tide for you. And this was one for me uh, when I said, no more, I'm not going to let people treat me like that anymore. And so two weeks later, I was a waitress at the time. My husband walked into the restaurant I worked in and that was it. It was it was love at first sight yeah. and really is my soulmate. So grateful to have found him, but he was further along on his spiritual journey than me. He already knew that there were mysteries in the world to uncover. So I started being interested in some of these things because he was interested and I was like, this is amazing. And soon enough, I was reading all these books and I was, I was going way beyond what he was interested in. And I really got into the law of attraction for a while. And I wanted to figure mm. out why does it work sometimes, but not other times? Mm. Why can I manifest little things? Like yep. I could always manifest a parking spot at Walmart, right? <laughs> but why couldn't I manifest abundance? Why were we stuck in this one bedroom apartment worried about being evicted? You know, even though I'm visualizing all these beautiful things in my mind. So I said, well, maybe if I could connect with some sort of higher being that I could figure this out. And so that's exactly what I tried to, to do as I went into a meditative state every day, but with a really specific intention to connect with my highest truth. I didn't know what that was, 
but I knew I didn't want to be lied to anymore. I didn't want to be sold half truths by people who had half figured it out um, and were putting it out as, as the gospel. You know, I wanted to know the truth, whatever that was. Right. And so I did this every day. It was about 30, 40 days of me doing this. Oh, wow. And then it, it happened one day, one night, I, I wrote down in a journal, we are all God. And I didn't know what that meant. I could feel something, but I was like, I don't know what this means, right? So in the beginning, the things coming through me were so much bigger than I understood. Um, and the next day in the shower, I asked the question, am I God? And there was an answer in my head and the answer was yes. And it wasn't that same voice that had been telling me my whole life that I wasn't good enough. And I might as well not try. And so that was, whoa. So I, I got out of the shower and I said to Phil, Phil, there was a voice in my head and it's telling me I'm God. <laughs> Bless his heart. He didn't laugh at me. He said, can I ask it some questions then? And that is exactly what he did. And we started recording these conversations every day. And again, this was back in 2011. And so at the end of, of about a month of recording, he, uh, he really wanted to publish them and I didn't. Uh, the voice, my inner voice, which is really my connection to God, we are all connected to God because we really are all God. We just have this veil of our persona or our ego telling us that we aren't. But anyway, so I was trying to create abundance for us and I kept hearing, publish these words, doesn't matter if it's an ebook or a, a blog post, just put the words out that's what you do. That's your next step. And I said, no way. My family's not going to invite me to Christmas. And so I spent seven, eight years just blocking that guidance, still hearing it every day, but refusing to do what it said. Mm. And then finally, about two years ago, I finally, I knew it was time I had to do it. And so we, we put, put it into a book and there it is. And there you are. Yes. Eight years later. Yeah. That, that's an amazing story. So it was published uh, two years ago, right? Or when was it? It was published, well, it was the last week of 2019. So just over a year ago, really. Yep, just over a year ago. And and I neglected to, to show you a copy of the book just so that everybody can see it, right? Yeah. One truth, one law, I am, I create. Thank you, yes. Yeah, yeah, love it. So I thought uh, we'd kind of take, a, take a, a direction where we just wanted to share some of the insights that we have kind of our, our walkaways. And for one, uh, for me, uh, it was that I am creates what I think, right? And when I'm deliberate about what I think, then I'm creating, right? And sometimes that goes on autopilot, but when I deliberately do it, then I know I can create. But just the thought that every thought is a creation was, was new and very revealing to me. So now when I kind of go around in my, my life is, hey, I did that. So for example, yesterday, you know, a bird was bathing himself in, in our bird bath and I sat there and watched it for a little bit. And I said, I did that, I created that. Um, so in, any comments on, on that? And, and what were your thoughts about that, uh, uh, that statement? Well, the, the more you intend into your thoughts, the more you intend and understand that you are creating with every thought that you yes. have, the more that you'll begin to see the evidence in the world around you that this is so. Because yes. while you are, we, again, every thought we have is creating, but most of our thoughts are us on autopilot, our subconscious thoughts that we aren't even recognizing or realizing is happening. It's one of those things like, if you're, if you're driving somewhere and you pull into the parking space and you say, how did I get here? I don't even remember mm. driving here. That's happened to all of us, right? That is because your subconscious knows how to get you there without killing you. And it knows how to do everything in your life without killing you. And so it's creating all the same things mm -hmm. you've always had to keep you safe. And right. yeah, so it's really about waking up and becoming aware. And then you Being really aware. do start seeing that evidence everywhere. You can start looking at an at a empty bird bath with no, you know, a, maybe it's not empty of water, but it, there's no birds around it and say, you know, I'm so happy that there are so many birds bathing in this bird bath. And lo and behold, some birds are going to ah, come there you go. And, and bathe. And it really is the more you start doing it and looking for it and intending it, the more you start seeing the physical evidence manifest. It really is cool. Yeah, love it. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, Rashi, you had, uh, what was your biggest walk away from the book? Um, hi, Aaron. So I'm having a fan moment. I think we all are having a fan moment right now. Um, but this is great. So thank you for your time. And um, I had many takeaways from this book. So it was hard to choose one, but uh, one definitely kind of stood out when that was when we kind of um, are able to be become more aware of that internal conversation, right? And then um, address uh, doubt. I know there's a there's a part in the book where um, you know I am says address the doubt as Phil when he's speaking to Phil um, as like almost like a third person different identity and uh, that's you know that kind of really stood out to me because I was like I can address myself in my old persona essentially kind of maybe separate that from what I'm trying to create uh, in in the new form right like in a new identity and so essentially my question to you is between the two, between this persona and between this, the I am, the two voices, you know, how do you strengthen I am? How do you kind of, you know, like you said, it just kind of popped in your head and you knew that it wasn't that same voice that's been speaking to you all your life or most of your life. And this time around, it was different. And so how is it that, you know, someone like us can kind of Beautiful understand, question. right? Thank Beautiful you. Question. So to clarify, I am is always trying to come through to all of us because that is our truth. And so when I say that I had never heard this voice before, that's not quite accurate. I had never recognized it before. Recognize. I had never gone in intending to know, knowing and intending that there was a difference. And so what you'll find is when you start doing this work I'm about to describe is that you'll see Oh my goodness, I have been hearing it my whole life. I've just been drowning it out with my voice of doubt and fear. And so what I recommend is beginning to ask yourself one question a day, an open-ended question, you know, um, something that you can really sink into. What is my purpose? What is my next step? You know, what, what, or what do you want me to know, God? Whatever, whatever feels like something you'd like answered and ask it repeatedly for 30 days or ask a variation of it for 30 days. And after you ask it, either record on a voice app or journal out the, the thoughts in your head, right? All the, all the reasons you're not good enough and this is stupid and this is never gonna work, all those things that come to you. And you'll find that over the course of 30 days, you also really start writing down or speaking out more truths, more unlimited, limitless thoughts, because that's what's going on. The voice of your fears and doubts tells you that you're limited and you can't do anything that you want. The voice of I am tells you that you're limitless and you can do anything. And that's how you tell the difference. Also, the voice of your fears and doubts is coming from a place of believing you aren't good enough as you are. So it might tell you, oh, go try this thing, go try this thing, go do this. But it's going to be bringing you back to the same old place it always brought you before. So it can be tricky <laughs> because it's saying, oh, you're not good enough the way you are. You have to go do this to get good enough, you know? And so your, your I am voice will always say, you are exactly where you need to be right now. You are it. You are it, you are it, you are it. So it's just getting comfortable with the thoughts in your head, really. It's starting to write them down or speak them out without judgment. And then after you've done that, go back and look and say, okay, well, where's this coming from? Which side of the spectrum? And through that process, you know, it doesn't have to take long, 15 minutes a day. You begin to get very comfortable with these different thoughts in your head and where they're coming from. Excellent. Yeah. And just start, sorry, just a quick follow up. Are you doing this during a meditative state? Like, do you kind of ask these questions during a meditative state or just kind of just whenever, whenever you're kind of having that internal conversation? So this, of course, is going to vary um, from person to person. But I say for me, I, I do not go into a meditative state. I believe a meditative state takes over me mm. as I do this. But I think that setting yourself into a meditative state, meditation has a lot of um, connotations and thoughts built around it for the entire universal mind collective. 
that are actually are projected then into this experience. And while it can be calming, while it can open and expand you, there's a huge idea out there that when you meditate, you're trying to block out all thoughts so you can just be. Mm. And a lot of people will do that. And a lot, and so there's a lot of misconceptions around meditation. So what I do is I take a couple deep breaths, two or three deep breaths, and I say, my intention is to connect with you I am, or you know, whatever name feels like you say, my intention is con to connect with my inner guidance. My connection is to um and my intention is to connect with, with God, source, whatever feels comfortable for you. And, and then you just ask the question. And because that's where you're gonna start getting the real thoughts, you know? Because it doesn't do you any good in your life if you need to be in a meditative state to become your truth, hmm. okay? That's you're setting yourself up then that you can only do this in a certain space. And that's not true. And if I had, had come from that belief, I would be so much less powerful than I am now, understanding that I can access this in seconds, that it is who I am. And so I don't have to do anything special to get there. Thank you. Yes, Love that it. was excellent. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rashi. Mm -hmm. and, and Rich, how, how about for you? What is your biggest okay. takeaway? Yeah, so obviously many, but one of my biggest takeaways was this notion that um, every doubt has the same creative power as the original thought. And so uh, when I combine that with the, which really stuck out to me, wanting is not knowing, only knowing is knowing, right? So I think that doubts can be a normal part of the life for all of us, especially if our autopilot or our subconscious mind is filled with doubt and fear and lack. So our conscious mind is what we think we believe. Our subconscious mind or autopilot is what we really believe. So when you look at your own journey, from the time that you sort of were told these things to the time you actually published, how did you, the process that you used to overcome the fear and the lack and the doubt from writing to publishing, how did you do that? And I think I should see what you would do today, but how did you do that during that time to get to that place? Beautiful question. So what I want everyone to know that's listening to this is that you are always being guided back home, back to your purpose, back to your mission, back to becoming your truth. And so I wasn't ready back then, but I was given the seed. I was given a vision of what could be. Um, and so what I did I didn't do anything to overcome it. In fact, I ran from oh, wow. it, slammed the door on it. Huh. Every single opportunity I had for years and years and years, huh. I tried to become as normal as I could. I had tried to block all of this out. And the interesting thing was when I was ready, it found me again anyway, and there wasn't anything I could do to stop it. Um, <laughs> so, so here's the thing though, okay? When you follow step one, which this book is all about step one, it's about tapping into that inner guidance. I was just talking about with Rashi and with all of you, you know, tap into that inner guidance and start to recognize what it is. And it will tell you your next step. And that next step, even if you don't understand how that fits, like in my course, Unlimited You, I work with all these amazing people and they're always, they're, they're tapping into their guidance. They're saying, I'm getting this guidance. I wanna go here. But my guidance is telling me to, to do this thing over here. And I said, well, then that's how you get going here is how you get there. You just don't see it because you don't see the whole picture, I you see. know, you, but you just, you need to lean into trust. So when you take action on your inner guidance, so the first step again is reading my book and learning how to get into that inner guidance. Yep. And mm -hmm. then you take action on it, even if you don't see how it makes sense. And the more you do that, and so you take the action. If, if I would have taken the action eight years ago, like I was told of, told to, I would have gotten there a million times faster. I wasn't ready and I'm okay with that. But take the action, even though you don't understand how it makes any sense for you. And even if it seems like it's taking you to the other side of the world, lean into trust. This is, this is the fast track. If you want the fast track, this is, the, this is Zoom. You're Because I know I've been on the fast track the last year. This is it. <laughs> so you uh, you take the take the action. 
okay, you took it, it didn't blow up. You're like, whoa, this didn't blow up in my face. I didn't see how this wasn't gonna blow up, but you'll see it doesn't. I've worked with enough people now to know that that said, I can't do this, this isn't gonna work for me. And they did it and it didn't blow up. And it actually, it brought them closer to where they wanted to go. And so then you ask for more guidance. And okay, you get it, now you do that. And each time you do this and see that it doesn't blow up in your face, your doubting goes down and your trusting goes up, your knowing goes yeah. up. Yeah. This is the fast track. It's getting that guy. So that really is the first step. You have to hear the guidance and then you take action on it. That is what builds your knowing. You know, I am talks about building your knowing. Everybody wants to, especially when you've read a lot of other books, like in the past, I had read a lot of other books too. You want to say, oh, okay, well, I'm the universe. I want to step into that right now. But you're missing, missing the building your knowing stuff. And that can only be done by listening to your guidance and taking action on it and repeating over and over and over again. And it doesn't take long when you do this. I mean, you can get new guidance every day if you're taking a little bit of action on it every day. Exactly. But it is a, it's, it's learning to trust. Yep. And building when you that see that your it. subconscious, yes. When you see that your, your subconscious mind is the lens of your perception for how you might hear the, the guidance, right? So it, during that time, and you, you're fast tracking now, but if, if your autopilot is maybe uh, fear and doubt and lack, and I'm, I don't know if I really heard that or not, was that me or was that I am? I know you said if anything is good, holy, pure, and lovely, that's I am. If it's spirit out of lack, it's, it's me and my persona. But is, that, is it as simple as that in, in terms of knowing that you're hearing I am? for the so guidance it is it really is looking at those thoughts in your head and beginning to distinguish what's coming from knowing I, I do this side what's coming from knowing i have worth and i'm limitless and what's coming from saying i'm not good enough as i am and there are lots of limits on me and just you really have to go in and do this work and some people depending on how much inner work they've already done they can do this right after they read the book some people have to spend this 30 days like i did going in and asking a question every day and analyzing those thoughts. But, you know, as I said, write them or speak them into a voice app without judgment, just let them flow. And it's okay right. if you look at them then after you, you get them out and then you put on your, your judgment hat and you, you see a, a page full of self-hatred. That's mm. not unusual in the beginning. Mm. It doesn't mean you're broken or you're doing it wrong. It means this is amazing. You're awakening to what's been going on in your subconscious. Beautiful. Right. Right. What an exciting step forward. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, Aaron, that takes us right up to the half an hour. So uh, again, uh, thank you for your time. How can people find you and reach out to you buy your book or get your content beautiful thank you for that question um one truth one law is on amazon and audible um and you can visit me at thank you <laughs> at erinworley.com um, i have a beautiful <clears throat> free uh quantum inner voice connection meditation that i recommend you just come sign up there on the home page and uh, yes, you can always send me an email at Aaron at AaronWorley.com or hello at AaronWorley.com as well. Thank okay. You. Thank you guys so much for having me on. This really was a joy. I appreciate your time and your sharing the message of the book. So much love to all of you. Thank you. Yes, Thank and you. love to you as well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. All right, bye-bye now. Bye.